Markers in dog training. What are they? Where do they come from? And why do we use them? All of that in today's video. But before we get into it, we would love your help in helping me achieve 1,000 YouTube subscribers. All you gotta do is touch that button on your smartphone or your tablet, click that mouse on your computer, and best of all, it doesn't cost you one dime. Great, now that you've done that, let's get right into the video. Alright you guys, welcome back to the channel. For those of you that don't know me, my name is Anthony Holcomb. I'm a professional dog trainer here in Tucson, Arizona, and I've been training dogs roughly for the last 13 years. Now, before we get into a demonstration of what marker training actually looks like, or conditioning a dog to a marker, we should talk a little bit about the history of markers in dog training or animal training. And in order to do that, we have to go all the way back to 1937 and introduce you to a man by the name of B.F. Skinner. B.F. Skinner first identified and described the principles of operant conditioning that are used in clicker training today. Now, of course, Skinner had students that he was passing these teachings along to. And two of his, of his students in particular named Marion Cruz and Keller Breland worked closely with him researching pigeon behavior, specifically training projects during World War II, when pigeons were taught to push a ball with their beaks. Cruz and Breland believed that traditional animal training was being needlessly hindered because the methods of praise and reward used back then did not inform the animal of success with enough promptness and precision to create the required cognitive connections for speedy learning. Basically, without markers, it takes a little bit longer for the animal to learn. Cruz and Brulian saw the potential for using the operant conditioning methods in commercial animal training. The two later married and in 1947 created the Animal Behavior Enterprise also known as ABE, the first commercial animal training business to intentionally and systematically incorporate the principles of behavior analysis and operant conditioning into animals. The Brelins coined the term bridging stimulus in the 1940s to refer to the function of a secondary reinforcer such as a whistle or a click. ABE continued operation until 1990 with the assistance of Bob Bailey after Kelly Breland died in 1965. Their report having trained over 15,000 animals and over 150 species during their time in operation. Their positive methods contrasted with traditional training at the time using aversives such as choke chains, prong collars, leash snapping, ear pinching, alpha rolling, the use of the shot collar, other terms like elephant goad, cattle prods, and elephant crushing were also very popular at the time. Now, although the Breelands tried to promote clicker training for dogs in the 1940s and the 1950s, because it, it, it wasn't used much at all back then, the method had been successfully used in zoos and marine mammal training, but the method failed to catch on for dogs until the late 1980s and 1990s. So, for all intents and purposes, marker training, or clicker training back then, was a relatively new technology and it really didn't make its way into dog training until the 80s and the 90s. In 1992, animal trainers Karen Pryor and Gary Wilkes started giving clicker training seminars to dog owners. In 1998, Alexandra Curlin published Click
specific or training for your horse. Now, this book that she printed rejected the aversives used in horse training, such as horse breaking and the use of the spur, the bit, and crop implementation, and longing with a horse whip. By the 1990s, many zoos used clicker training for animal husbandry because with this method, they did not have to use force or medication. So this was incredibly, incredibly beneficial in the zoos. They could be moved to different pens or given veterinary treatment with much less stress on the animals. In the 21st century, training books began to appear for their other companion animals as well, such as cats, birds, and rabbits. So as you can see, this got incredibly popular incredibly fast. And it's its use in dog training, or animal training, for that matter, is incredibly powerful. And when at all possible, we should be using markers in our training for not just dogs, but many other animals as well. Some credit trainer Gary Wilkes, dog trainer Gary Wilkes, with introducing clicker training for dogs to the general public. But behavioral psychologist Karen Pryor was the first to spread the idea with her articles, books, and seminars. Wilkes joined Pryor early before going solo. Now, while marker training was associated with operant conditioning very early on, it began to take on its own form and meaning through classical conditioning. Classical conditioning is also known as a bridging stimulus, as the Breelands coined it, but another famous pioneer, Ivan Pavlov, also referred to a bridging stimulus as an involuntary response or a conditioned reflex. So what this means is after enough pairings with the, the clicker, with enough pairings with food, when the dog begins to hear this noise, they will have a conditioned reflex or an involuntary response because they really like food and they know that food is coming. So it creates this sense of excitement that becomes involuntary. This is incredibly, incredibly powerful. And we can also um, put this into human terms. Uh, one example would be if every time I walked up to you and I punched you in your arm, every time, if I did this repetitively, Every time I got within striking distance, you would, you would have a, like a reflex. You would start to prepare for that. And that's really what classical conditioning is in the context of dog training and using markers with rewards in dog training. You can also use markers for punishment in dog training as well. So as an example, if we have a dog that does not like a squirt bottle, we can use that as a form of punishment to get a dog to stop doing something like maybe barking through the window, right? Every time the dog attempts to bark through the window, we could say no or uh-uh, and then we would squirt the dog. The, the squirt of the water would follow immediately after those words. And eventually, with enough repetition, the dog knows that the water's coming and they'll start to have this conditioned reflex or involuntary response to the word no or the, the, the noise uh-uh. So this is incredibly powerful. In today's modern dog training, there's two forms of markers that are happening in the context of rewards. There's mechanical clickers and there's verbal markers. Now, a mechanical clicker is just something that you push that makes a very specific noise. Our verbal markers are simply us using our words as a mark. So the most popular verbal marker in dog training right now is probably the word yes. Now it doesn't have to be this word, it could be any word you want it to be, but let's just use yes as an example. So every time my dog is going to do something that I ask him to do, I'm gonna say yes, and then a reward or a piece of food uh, a reward in the form of food or toys or verbal and physical praise will follow. 
Now to keep it very clear, let's just use food as an example. So if I ask my dog to sit and they sit, I'll say yes, and then I will offer up on them a piece of food. So food follows the mark. In dog training, there are about five words we use consistently as markers for behavioral events to cue our dogs for behaviors. So an example of this would be ready. Are you ready? Are you ready? And we're kind of preparing our dog that training is about to begin. With enough repetition, they'll start to figure out we're going to get into some dog training. And that will start to create some excitement for the dog, especially if they're, we're using food in our training and the dog is food motivated. Uh, we talked about the word yes. Uh, yes is the most common word we use. It's a primary reinforcer, generally speaking, which means every time we say yes, food is going to follow every single time. Another popular verbal marker that's generally used as a secondary reinforcer and generally includes a variable reinforcement schedule is going to be the word good. So when I say good to my dog, sometimes it's going to have a reward, a food reward that follows, and sometimes it's not. Then we have our no marker, our punishment marker. This is usually going to be the marker that we condition that the dog is going to uh, learn that uh, punishment follows. We used the example of the squirt bottle earlier, and we're probably going to leave it at that. But that's one of the five typical um, markers that we do use. And then our last marker that we tend to use in dog training is, is going to be the word all done. So this is just simply information to the dog that training has come to an end, and we no longer require their attention. They're free to go off and do what they want to do. So those are about five examples of, of how we use uh, verbal markers in dog training. Now, something really important to understand in all of this is that we spent a lot of time using food and using words to create markers in our dog training. And, we, and in the beginning, th these markers had no meaning, but they eventually... We gave it meaning through the use of food. So understanding that, it's important to know that these markers can lose their value as well if we stop pairing them with food. So in short, simply put, markers in dog training facilitates faster learning. That is the most important takeaway from today's video. Now that you have a basic understanding of what markers are in dog training and how we can use them for rewards or punishers. We do wanna show you a demonstration of what this actually looks like. So we're gonna show you three dogs here. The first two dogs we're gonna demonstrate are going to be myself with a Doberman Pinscher and a Pit Bull. And I'm gonna simply work on conditioning my verbal marker, which is the word yes, with food. And then secondly, we got a quick, quick video of a, a client of mine that's using a clicker in his training, and you'll get to see what that looks like as well. Yes. Yes. There we go, buddy. Yes. Yes. 
Yes. Yes. Yes. Yes, yeah, so boy. This way. Got it. Come. Okay. Yes. Ready? Sammy. Good boy. Beautiful. Good boy. Thanks. Okay, you guys. We hope you got a thorough understanding of what markers are in dog training, how we like to use them, the simple fact that it facilitates faster learning. And that's all we have for you for today. If you like this video, definitely hit the like button. And don't forget to subscribe. We'll see you in the next one.